Great, everybody. Welcome to another OpenShift Commons briefing. And today, as we like to do on Mondays, we tech previews, upstream projects, and I'm really thrilled to have Damian Hansen back. Um, he's now a principal software engineer at OpenShift, and he's going to talk about um, a feature that's coming in OpenShift 4.8, the Gateway API, and um, a little bit of background, I think, on Contour as well, a project that it springs from. Um, or is related to. So I'm going to let Damien um, introduce himself, walk us through this, maybe do a demo or two, and then we'll have a live conversation in Q&A at the end. So um, ask your questions in the chat, and we'll get rocking and rolling. So take it away, Damien. Yeah, thanks, Diane. Uh, as Diane mentioned, uh, my name is Damien Hansen. I'm a principal software engineer with OpenShift. And I'm um, going to spend some time today uh, going through a um, a dev preview feature that's going to be coming in OpenShift 4.8, and the feature is called Gateway API. A uh, little background on Gateway API is, um, so if we look at what we have today, we have the ingress resource for Kubernetes. And the ingress resource, it's been around for a while, actually recently GA'd, but uh, there's been challenges with the ingress resource. So if you're familiar with OpenShift, uh, the uh, the route resource is primarily used. Uh, we support ingress and route, uh, but what we actually do is translate ingress to a route resource. But uh, the res the route resource was actually even created before the ingress resource uh, because we at OpenShift needed uh, a way to express how to route traffic into the cluster, and so we created the route resource. Uh, but the ingress resource came around was created uh, as a simple way to provide ingress. And as it evolved, what we started to see was that it just wasn't expressive enough to meet um, you know, complex routing uh, use cases. And uh, what started to happen was implementers um, started exposing some of this additional uh, configuration through annotations that's become uh, pretty difficult to manage, um, and so that's kind of where we're at with the uh, the ingress resource. Um, and then we also look at the service resource, and uh, it's kind of become a dumping ground for all sorts of kind of uh, Kubernetes service uh, modeling, um, and so it's becoming uh, quite bloated. Uh, and if we look here, this is actually the picture from when we first got together, uh, looked uh, Looks pretty strange these days. Uh, well, I guess maybe not so much anymore, depending uh, where, you know, where you're from. But it looks kind of strange, uh, you know, with the, the pandemic. I was like, wow, this was uh, I think about four or five months. This is uh, like November of 2019 that we got together at the KubeCon North America in San Diego to really start talking through this and then formalizing a group. We created a working group. Uh, to uh, come up with a solution, and uh, what we called it at the time was service APIs, and and um, service APIs stuck around until just about I think about two or three months ago, where we renamed uh, the project to Gateway API. Um, uh, but after the group was formed, uh, it took us about a year to really get to the point where we felt uh, comfortable cutting a release, and we cut the V1 Alpha one release back in November of 2020. Um, and through this process, um, you know, we at Red Hat made a decision that um, that we were going to implement Gateway API in Contour as opposed to OpenShift Router. Uh, there's uh, things that were happening in the industry with the uh, um, you know, Envoy uptake, uh, with Envoy as well as now Contour being CNCF projects. Uh, you know, OpenShift Router. Uh, has been good to us, but we wanted to try and move forward with an implementation that had a diverse community that was uh, um, established upstream, a CNCF community, and, and those were big drivers uh, for us and, and uh, you know, ultimately led us to uh, using Contour uh, to implement Gateway API. So let's talk a little bit about the API itself. Uh, you know, one of the first areas to, to really point out is that um, you know, Gateway API is a collection of resources, and these resources are uh, modeled uh, off of how clusters uh, are managed and operate, right? And so you have these different groups, uh, a group that will provide the infrastructure, a group that operates 
the infrastructure, and then you have the users. And in, in our case, those users are, are uh, developers that want to uh, expose their applications, right? And so uh, kind of on the left-hand side of the diagram there, you see those different personas um, and how they align to the resources that make up Gateway API, right? And so we have uh, a Gateway class, which um, it, it's, if you're familiar with uh, storage classes or ingress class, it's just a way to um, to define a set of configuration or capabilities uh, in, in a gateway API sense, it's uh, those capabilities are around um, expressing a gateway, right? And so uh, simple example that, uh, that may help with uh, establishing a mental model is, is if we have uh, two different gateway classes, uh, one we call external, one that we call internal. And um, the external gateway class uh, creates a external cloud load balancer while the internal gateway class creates an internal cloud load balancer. Uh, those are two very simple use cases, um, but hopefully that helps you understand uh, what we're trying to accomplish with uh, kind of classifying gateways uh, using the gateway class uh, a resource. Then we have the gateway resource, right? And so the gateway resource uh, instantiates the infrastructure, right? So a gateway class, which also in um, in this diagram uh, isn't represented, but the gateway class will typically uh, reference some kind of custom resource. Uh, and and uh, when we get to the demo, I'll, I'll show you that in more detail, but typically gateway class is also going to reference some kind of custom resource um that expresses all of the detailed kind of configuration right and so that's what that custom resource is used for and that allows um gateway api to be portable uh, right so we're not actually putting implementation specific configuration parameters uh in a gateway uh, class uh, but you know that custom resource as well as the gateway class uh, those are, think of those as just kind of configuration snippets that live in the cluster and nothing really happens. There's no infrastructure provisioning that's going on, anything like that until a gateway is instantiated, right? And so uh, typically a cluster operator is gonna create the gateway and that will go ahead and cause um, the controller uh, or the implementation to take action on the gateway, right? And so it's gonna go ahead and see that, hey, cluster operator, uh, wants to create a gateway, uh, let me validate it. Um, all right, it's valid. Let me start acting on it and looking at the gateway class and this custom CRD uh, and start creating the infrastructure that's being requested, right? And you see further down this chain and then you have an HTTP route. So uh, there's um, different route types uh, that are uh, um, uh, spec'd by Gateway API. Right. And, and they're, um, you know, they're protocol specific. So there's TLS route, there's HTTP route, and then there's even uh, layer four uh, abstractions, a TCP route and UDP route. Um, and so uh, the route types is where our developers uh, are going to be interfacing. Right. And so we have these developers that each that created an HTTP route to expose uh, um, one of their application services that uh, that reside in the cluster. So uh, beyond just the Gateway API model and and um, how it's designed around these roles, it's also designed to be extensible, right? I talked uh, a little bit in the previous slide about this you know, CRD that gets referenced uh, by Gateway class. Uh, well, that's not just the only reference that uh, that's provided for um, for a way to expose like implementation specific configuration throughout the API. Uh, we uh, as a maintainer team and others uh, really try to, to think through different use cases from the simple to the very complex and try to figure out where in these resources uh, are the best way to expose um, additional customization while keeping the core uh, protocol 100% uh, portable, right? And so there's these different uh, kind of uh, layers of, um, of functionality from core 
to extended to custom. And the key is, is that uh, the core is 100% portable, right? So we can go create a gateway, gateway class using 100% of the core uh, API features. And uh, you can go between providers and implementations and everything's all good, right? Uh, more than likely, you're, you're going to get to a point where you want to uh, dip into some of the extended or custom features of that particular implementation. You just need, you know, need to be mindful of, um, you know, what extended and custom features you're using if you do decide to make, you know, uh, move uh, these resources around between implementations. Uh, and, you know, the key point here also on, uh, on the slide is uh, the gravitational pull for its core, right? So because all these different implementations from proxies to load balancers have so many different um, capabilities, uh, you know, we can't put all of that in the core. And again, one of the reasons why we drove this kind of three-tiered uh, design. Uh, but as, you know, this market matures and uh, more and more of these uh, uh, pieces of functionality and capability become more common across the industry. Um, our hope is that we bring those features from custom and extended into core and really drive the value of, of the core features of the API. You know, I talked uh, uh, at the beginning of the presentation about you know, ingress and, and the challenges of ingress being you know, very simple and the way that we express um, uh, additional functionality uh, is through annotations, and that becomes very challenging uh, to support over a long period of time. Um, and so that is one of the areas that uh, we tackled with Gateway API is, is, again, finding that balance between making the core features portable while also making uh, Gateway API extensible so that uh, we can be expressive without having to use uh, annotations. Um, and um, now here is just kind of a simple example of of using uh, traffic splitting based on weights, right? And so if it's traffic splitting, mirroring, uh, you know, routing to um, to different types of resources, not necessarily a service resource. It could be some kind of custom resource or a um, you know a S3 bucket or uh, any kind of resource, right? Uh, we can support. So we're not really kind of locking in the design to a, uh, a specific type of resource for the back end, for example. And then, you know, I talked about portability, but um, now here's, uh, you know, here's current implementations. Again, these implementations are either in the works or uh, at an alpha feature level. Um, but, um, you know, I'm pretty impressed with the, uh, the diversity uh, of the community along with you know, for being uh, an alpha implementation, again, V1 Alpha 1 was cut uh, just in November, um, that we have, uh, you know, we have some implementations that are uh, really progressing here. So where are we at today, right? So, um, you know, we as Red Hat, uh, we established maintainership and Gateway API and Contour communities. That was really important for us to make sure that we're invested in these communities, uh, not only for ourselves, but you know, for OpenShift and for our customers. Uh, we developed an upstream operator for managing Contour, right? So really important as I'm sure everyone knows here, um, you know, for functionality within OpenShift, that functionality typically needs to be managed by an operator. And so, um, we went ahead and worked with the Contour community to establish an operator and uh, very happy with the progress of that project. The operator is being released uh, in uh, synchronized release with Contour. Um, and I think this is now the third or fourth release that we've done that. Uh, we've got a roadmap. Things are working really well with having that operator and not only having the operator, but again, having it upstream living with, uh, with Contour is, is very important to us. Uh, we added Gateway API support in Contour and, and Contour Operator in V113, which was just uh, about six weeks ago. Uh, we improved that support in V114 Contour uh, that was released just about a week and a half ago. Uh, we have, you know, we're working hard within that community to continue improving the support. We still have a ways to go, but um, you know, I think where we're at 
um, you know, we're very happy with. And, and again, we're uh, working hard to keep moving that uh, gateway API support in a positive direction. And uh, for OpenShift, um, you know, kind of the heart of uh, what we're talking about here today is uh, we're actually uh, providing a dev, a dev preview of, um, of Gateway API Contour and the Contour Operator in 4.8. So we're really excited uh, to provide this dev preview. Uh, anyone interested in the preview, again, keep in mind it is dev preview, um, but um, we're really hoping to uh, to have users kind of kick the tires um, on the solution, give us feedback, um, you know, work with us to help make the feature the very best feature that it can moving forward. Um, and so we, you know, we, to do this, uh, we really want to be able to have that partnership with, um, you know, with our customers. Um, and uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, to hearing from uh, from users. Let me take a few minutes. Let's run through a demo here. And uh, while I do that, let me go ahead and throw this in the chat window for others to save and see to the chat window. Let me do this. Diane, I threw a link to this guide in, uh, in Slack, if you don't mind posting it to the chat window here. I right. appreciate that. Uh, so what I'm uh, sharing with you here, this is, uh, this is, documentation that I've put together on running Gateway API on OpenShift. You see um, that this is the version that I've tested on, which is a 4.8 nightly build um, using um, upstream 1.14.0 of Contour and the Contour operator. And again, just to, to stress, uh, there's no, you know, OpenShift specific integration here. We're not forking anything from upstream. The dev preview is basically going to say, hey, here's how you take this upstream project and run it on OpenShift. Um, and uh, that is what we're kind of using as a baseline, uh, which is also, you know, which is very good in the sense that, right, uh, we're going to start this feature using upstream, not a fork. We're going to start using upstream operator, upstream contour, upstream gateway API, and then evolve the support from that, but that will always be our baseline to make sure that we're in lockstep with upstream and why, uh, you know, we felt it was critical that all the work we've done up until this point is really about getting upstream right so it can be right in OpenShift. Uh, but uh, take a look at this documentation. This, uh, this will be uh, used uh, uh, for the official product documentation along with some other documentation that we'll develop but this is essentially just a quick start, right? How to go ahead and um, get Gateway API up and running in my OpenShift cluster. So let's kind of uh, walk through it here. The first thing that we're gonna do is run uh, Contour Operator. Let me uh, jump over to my terminal here. And I uh, have a cluster, OpenShift 4A cluster running. I've configured uh, my OC client to talk to the cluster and you see that all my Cluster operators are uh, reporting the expected status conditions. So everything's looking good. Let's go ahead and uh, provision the contour operator. You see that we create a, a namespace for the contour operator to run in. Uh, we install a bunch of CRDs. Some of these CRDs like gateway classes is from the upstream gateway API project. Uh, other um, other CRDs are from Contour Operator. For example, Contour Operator watches Contour custom resources and then performs some kind of action based on those Contour custom resources. Um, and um, some of the uh, CRDs are for Contour itself, HTTP routes, or I'm sorry, HTTP proxies, TL certificate delegations and such. We set up all the RBAC needed for the operator and contour. Uh, we create a service for the operator's metric end, uh, metrics endpoint. And then we use a deployment resource to manage the operator. So let me hit deploy. Oops, let me bring this up a little bit so it's not cut off. There we go. So let's see what the status of the deployment is for the contour operator. All right, 
it's available. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tail the logs too. And uh, you see that the, uh, the operator is available, uh, that it's running and, and uh, tells us what image of contour uh, that it will use um, along with uh, what image of Envoy proxy it will be using. Um, starts the metrics server, creates a metrics endpoint, starts the controllers for the different resources that it's going to manage, right? So gateway controller, the contour controller, the gateway class controller, You'll see there's no HTTP route or UDP route or TLS route controllers. Uh, that's because uh, Contour, so Contour, the controller, um, will manage um, those resources. And I'm trying to think, you know, I didn't have it in the presentation, but um, let me just kind of go back here and talk um, for a second about Contour. All right, so uh, Contour is it's um it's a control plane for envoy right so uh in for gateway api or just using you know contour itself right contour is a control plane for managing envoy proxies envoy proxies are the data plane so when you create um, a gateway you create an ingress or um uh, http proxy is the custom resource that the contour community created to get around the uh, the ingress resource limitations that I talked about at the beginning of, uh, of our presentation, and um, and so it's uh, you know Contra is going to watch the, any of those resources, and then it's going to go ahead and, and uh, instantiate or manage uh, your Envoy proxy fleet, which will um, you know essentially take the those resource configurations, translate them into an an Envoy configuration, and then um, Envoy will handle the, the, the proxying. Uh, let's go back here to, all right. So um, like I said, we uh, we now have the operator uh, up and running you know, on the logs. We'll keep that there. Um, and let's, uh, let's kind of go down through here. So I, I mentioned now for dev preview, we don't have really any uh, OpenShift specific integration at this point. Uh, take a look at issue 112 where we have that uh, uh, as an issue on the operator repo uh, where we'd like to um, create um, an abstraction that allows, um, that allows Contour and Contour Operator to, um, you know, to perform management uh, for certain platforms, right? Um, and won't dive down into too much of the details, but look at the issue 112 if you'd like to know more. Uh, what we need to do here is uh, we need to create um, or establish or associate uh, the contour and the contour cert gen service accounts uh, with the non roots SCC. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, do that for the contour service account, and let's also do it for cert gen. And the key point here is you see this uh, the schema for this command. Come on. All right, there we go. Uh, system service account project contour contour cert gen and then project contour contour here. See the schema. Uh, and what we have here in the schema is this is uh, this portion is the namespace and then this is the name of the service account, right? You see contour and contour cert gen both in the project contour namespace. The key here is uh, this is going to be the namespace of our gateway. So keep that in mind, wherever, if you create your own gateway and you put it in names, uh, namespace foo, that make sure that when you, do, when you, uh, when you uh, add the contour and contour certain gen service accounts to the non-root SEC, that you are specifying the, uh, the name of the, the namespace of the gateway here. So that's good to go. Let's go ahead and uh, provision our gateway. Now, say this is a gateway, but this is actually going to be uh, multiple resources here. Let's take a look at what they are. Give it a second. We create, uh, this is unchanged because we already have the contour operator namespace, but we create the project contour namespace. Remember, uh, right up here. 
uh, for our service accounts match this namespace. So we create the namespace that allows us to, cr uh, to create these resources in, right? So this contour will be created in the operator's namespace. The gateway class resource is a cluster scoped resource. So uh, it doesn't matter what namespace, right? And then the gateway itself is uh, is created in namespace project contour. And we'll dive into each of these resources in a little more detail here. Um, but let's take a look. Let's uh, see here. So the first thing we're going to look at here is this custom resource called a contour. And the, our contours is named contour gateway sample. And again, this has uh, been created in the contour operator namespace. So in the same namespace as the operator, which is required. Um, and we see that it's ready and that it's been admitted by the gateway class. And let's take a little bit closer look here and we'll dive into some of the details, right? Um, and you see that it references that sample gateway class. So there, there's a bi-directional binding that occurs between this contour custom resource and the gateway class that it's bound to. Because the gateway class, we'll see here in a second, uh, it actually references this contour resource. So there's a bi-directional binding between the two resources. Uh, this field is actually ignored when gateway class is uh, gateway class reference is specified, so we can skip that. But you see, here's a lot of the details, right, that uh, aren't are not meant to be expressed through gateway API, right? Because uh, again, different implementations will um, will have different configuration settings and so forth, and so um, you see the network publishing uh, field in the contour custom resource allows us to specify the container ports and port numbers uh, that Envoy will use, uh, the, the type of load balancer. So we're gonna create an AWS external load balancer and then the number of replicas that we're going to um, create for the contour control plane. And it also gives us some status here as well to let us know how many of the contour uh, and Envoys are available uh, along with some status conditions. So all this looks really good. Uh, give you a little more background of what configuration we're expressing through uh, the Contour custom resource. Let's take a look at this uh, gateway class now, and we'll just dive into the details of the gateway class. So remember, uh, this Contour is referencing this gateway class, and we're going to see now this gateway class references that Contour we just looked at, because um, this is where we go ahead and uh, do that in the gateway class so using the parameters ref field where we say, hey, um, for this gateway class, um, again, going back to like the earlier example, this could be our external gateway class instead of what did I call it? Uh, contour gateway class sample or uh, sample gateway class, right? So based on that configuration we saw in the contour, this could very well be our you know, external gateway class because we're, you know, any gateways of this class will create an external AWS load balancer. So that's kind of the kind of that uh, workflow and the, and the linkage between these different resources. The other key piece is the controller field, right? And so uh, contour operator is going to be looking at gateway classes. And then one of the first things it's going to be doing is it's going to say, I see a gateway class. Let me see if it uh, specifies the controller string that's required for me to manage this gateway class. And so we, we use this uh, uh, this string for, for telling Contour to, to manage gateway classes. So this allows, uh, you know, clusters that, similar to like ingress uh, controllers, right? You can have a cluster with different ingress controllers. Same thing with gateway class and gateways, right? We, we may have multiple gateways, but we may want um, those to have different implementations um, and uh, the controller uh, field is what's used for that. And we see uh, that uh, this gateway class uh, is admitted and, and that it's owned by the contour operator. So looking good so far. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, at the gateway here. Right. So a couple things here. Uh, we'll start from the top down. Um, we see again, uh, this linkage, right? Uh, we, we use the gateway class name uh, field. 
uh, to tell this gateway which gateway class it is part of. Um, and then uh, the gateway has multiple listeners, right? So these are like the network endpoints that the gateway will be listening on. Right, and so it specifies what uh, protocol it'll be listening on, the ports, and then we get into this routes field, and and um, this is something to, you know, to really understand uh, because the same lines of this linkage that we're seeing throughout the APIs, uh, this route, this routes field is is what allows us to link routes, right? So. Um, one of the next areas of the uh, API that we'll dive into is the actual routes, right? The routing logic of how do we, now that you know traffic is hitting a gateway, how do we actually route that traffic to uh, the backend resources, like a service resource that, that we want, right? And so uh, this routes field uh, is going to uh, express what type of uh, routes that it should bind to, uh, what namespaces, right? So um, do we, you know, we do we only want to bind routes that are in the same namespace as the gateway? Do we want to um, allow routes across all namespaces, or we can use selectors to be very specific and which routes we're uh, we're binding to? So we got a lot of flexibility there to uh, uh, to create that binding with routes. Right? And so, and uh, same logic here. Um, for HTTP for our HTTPS listener as well, um, and then we have our status conditions, right? So we have status conditions. Uh, you see that the gateway is ready to serve routes, um, and it's it's ready to go. So uh, the next step is to actually uh, create a route, uh, and so let's go ahead and do that. Um, you know, optionally too, you could see, let's take a look at the, the infrastructure that was created by the gateway, right? So when we uh, instantiated this gateway, um, the operator took action on that and did a bunch of stuff for us, right? It created a, a deployment to manage our, our control plane. Um, it created a daemon set to establish our, um, our data plane and did a bunch of stuff, config maps and the service counts, all this kind of stuff to, to make Contour and Envoy all work in harmony. Uh, but let's go ahead and create a, a sample workload. We're going to use CARD, and, and you could go ahead and, and uh, get a little background on the CARD app uh, if you'd like. But uh, we'll go ahead and provision CARD, create a deployment, the service, and then you see that this is our HTTP route, right? So this is the route that the gateway is going to be um, binding to. Um, let's take a look at the status of these. They're running, things looking good. And you know what I wanted to do as well that I didn't show you before is the logs. There was a reason why I had the logs for the operator, right? And so, uh, as I mentioned, when, uh, when the operator um, sees the contour custom resource, the gateway class resource, it's going to reconcile those. Um, it's going to make sure that they're valid, that they're uh, referencing one another, all that good stuff. And then again, the, the key resource is that gateway resource. And when it sees a gateway resource, it starts doing a whole bunch of work for us. The RBAC, the you know, the RBAC for Contra, the config map, the daemon set uh, to manage the Envoy proxy fleet, all this stuff, right? So I just wanted to show you that really quickly. Uh, but back to our example workload, we see the, the pods are running. We've front-ended uh, those pods with the cluster uh, IP service, and we've uh, established a, or created an HTTP route. Go back to our documentation. And let's actually even take a look at what this route looks like. So again, with that theme of bi-directional relationships, uh, we've got, um, we've specified for our gateways that we're gonna allow same namespace. So if our gateway was not in uh, the namespace project contour, which is a namespace of this HTTP route, uh, we would not bind to the gateway, even if the gateway um, has a different configuration, right? Because both need to agree on the same configuration. But fortunately we do, right? Because the gateway previously, let me see if it's back here still. Right, 
here's a gateway configuration that says, hey, we're going to allow routes from the same namespace, right? And um, you see here, again, on the route side, we're saying, hey, allow gateways from the same namespace. And so uh, with the route, we say, okay, what host name um, that uh, we're going to use for routing this traffic, right? So this is going to align with the, the host header. So basically any requests that, uh, that hit the gateway with a host header, local.projectcontour.io will match this route. So the gateway knows, okay, um, select this route, not just because of its gateway policy here, but that um, this request is coming in with the appropriate uh, host name header. And then I've got some rules, right? I'm gonna forward this request to uh, endpoints associated to service name card on this particular port. And we have a match here, right? So before we do the forward, we're gonna match not only the host name, but what's the path, okay? So any requests that hit this host name, uh, the root path, really, uh, you know, any sub paths, uh, let's go ahead and forward to endpoints of service name card. And then uh, we also have status conditions so we can see what, um, what gateways this route is bound to, right? This is the, the gateway that uh, we've uh, we created and um, went through the details on, and that it this route's admitted, right? Because it's valid, so it's passed validation. It's uh, associated to a gateway, and it's admitted. So admitted true is uh, that's the key status condition we're looking for. So everything's looking good so far. Let's go back here to our documentation. And uh, let's go ahead and, and test connectivity through our gateway. And you see, because I don't have a DNS name created for this, I have to go ahead and supply this host header here, right? Um, and so I get the, uh, the gateway IP from uh, the host name or depending on uh, your load, uh, your cloud provider, as I specify here in these uh, in these directions, you may need to swap out host name for IP. Um, so uh, this cluster is running on AWS, which uh, uh, uses host names for uh, load balancer ingress. Um, but anyways, uh, so we're going to test by curling uh, using the host header that matches uh, the host name of our HTTP route and hit that gateway address and we should get a 200 back. Uh, so we've, uh, we've, we've established infrastructure using gateway APIs. Um, again, the gateway APIs, the implementation is Contour. And Contour manages Envoy, so Contour and Envoy. Uh, this is all upstream running on OpenShift. Um, and we have verified connectivity from you know, my client here running on my laptop all the way through my OpenShift cluster running on AWS to the card, uh, to the card application. And what we can do is just verify that those requests did go through um, our Envoy proxy fleet, right? So let's look at the logs of the Envoy daemon set. And you see here that we found three pods and it's using one of them. So since we have three, we need to, so let's see here. So the request did not go through this particular pod in the daemon set. Um, let's go ahead and logs. Let's change this to PO. All right, so 9MMVR, that would be this one. Let's try a different Envoy proxy in our fleet. Nope, didn't go through that one. Let's try this one. There it is. So there's a curl request that I sent and it went through this particular Envoy proxy. And last but not least, let's actually take a look at uh, the deployment. Maybe we'll have to do the same thing, get into a particular uh, pod of the card uh, application and we can see that uh, the request actually hitting. So we see here, no requests coming in. So we probably have to do the same thing here. Uh, 
with our card endpoints, which we have these three. Okay. Uh, logs, and let's do. Yeah. All right. Uh, the first one, which one is this that we looked at? So um, three pods using uh, HNS. So that's three HNS. So let's try. Let's try this one. Nope. Let's try this one. There it is. So you see the, the get request. And you may say to yourself, well, what IP is this? So this, we get to you know, minus O wide, minus O wide. That's going to be the, um, the IP of the Envoy proxy that service the request. So we see that it came in on 223. There's 223. Right, and when we verified, we we looked at those different uh, Envoy proxy logs. Uh, should be SRR seventy five that we saw the request come in. Where is it at? SRR seventy five, right there. So that kind of stitches the whole request workflow through um, the infrastructure that was uh, provisioned um, by Gateway API using Contour. So let's go ahead. We've got um, some time here. I'll go ahead and, and stop and uh, hand it back to Diane and others that um, may have any questions. Well, I think that was really a great introduction to the, the Gateway API. So thanks very much um, at Calm, Cool, and Collective and, and all of your resource links there. So I'm, I'm thrilled with that. So we, um, anyone should be able to follow along with the quick start. Um, there were a couple of questions in the chat, and Mark Curry has uh, has joined us as well, who is the PM for some of this, and a few other folks here that are working with you, Mika and others, and I'll unmute you. In the chat, um, and I think you answered a lot of them. Um, one of them was early on, um, uh, you know, what are the alternatives to Contour, and um, I pointed people to the Contour FA. Project Contours FAQ, and you did cover that, so I think we're, we're good with that one. Um, and then Noel was asking, could you explain how all of this fits in with Service Mesh, um, and is Contour intended to replace Envoy? Um, and I think he covered that one up. Um, you might, um, Mark's there, if he wants to go in a little bit deeper on that. Yeah, let me, uh, bef before Mark jumps in, let me just kind of talk about the service mesh. And so um, in one of the slides I, I shared, you see the different implementations and one of those being Istio, right? And so uh, it, if it's Istio, Knative, OpenShift with our route resource, I mean, this is, these are the, the issues that Gateway API is trying to tackle, right? And, and why did the, you know, most of these projects started off their initiative with Ingress. I mean, I remember early on with Istio, it started off using standard Kubernetes Ingress. And then like pretty much all these projects, they get to a point where it's like, ah, you know what? Ingress is just not expressive enough to meet my needs. I need to go create a custom resource. And Istio goes out and creates their own gateway and virtual service. And I mean, each project goes and does this, right? Even with Contours, the HTTP proxy resource. So what gateway APIs trying to do is create this common abstraction, right? This common API that Knative, Istio, any implementation can use. And, and the positive thing about that is, you know, we reached out to these different community leaders or project leaders. So we've worked very closely with Istio and why they're on that list of supported implementations, right? Same with Knative. Um, you know, I talked about the route resource. It's why we're here at the table. Uh, uh, and so, you know, it's uh, it's really meant to be kind of that, um, you know, I like what uh, Mark has shared uh, in the past is like it unifies ingress. So it's like, hey, I don't care if I want you know, to pr provide ingress into my cluster for a standard Kubernetes service. Right. Typically, that would be done using ingress. Right. Um, or for OpenShift, it would be the route. Right. Um, or if it's uh, if it's 
uh, Istio, okay, I'm going to create a group gateway and a virtual service, or if it's K-native, because I've, yeah, it doesn't matter. We don't, you know, uh, the cluster operator doesn't need to know 20 different APIs to basically provide ingress. They can now start to say, hey, the, the, the path forward for most of these projects, if not all of them, is let's start converging on gateway API so we have this unified way of expressing ingress, no matter, you know, what the back end is. If it's, again, a standard, you know, Kubernetes service, some custom back end, serverless, service mesh. Uh oh, uh, Diane, you're on mute. I muted myself. I never do that. Um, Mark, did you want to add anything to that? Or no, I think Dane covered it very well. Um, so we we definitely want to unify, as Dane was saying, across some of the different layered products of OpenShift. So we have service mesh, we have OpenShift virtualization uh, with three scale products. We want to provide a mechanism that's going to work equally well, equally as well across all of those um, to simplify the decision and configuration process as well as unifying efforts. So this, this as, Dan, uh, as um, Daniel was saying, is represents a unifying effort um, ultimately. That's, that's probably the biggest outcome, I think, from me as a, uh, for me as a product manager, probably the biggest outcome of this. And, and it seems like a lot of the questions that are coming in are contour instead of this, or contour with this, or that. It, it's really about getting alignment across all of the gateway um, and the APIs, which I think is an amazing effort. And it, it is something that's been um, working through the SIG in CNCF as well. So this has been a, a pretty interesting collaboration, um, and hopefully it, it resolves solves as everyone um, matures in these projects. So that's great. Yeah, users, uh, users should, they don't want to have to consider, you know, how is it, how, how do I get my traffic into the cluster if I have one type of traffic versus another? It should be simpler than that. And and so this is, this is one step in that direction. And this is all coming on the heels of the OpenShift 4.8 release, correct? If I'm wrong, this is. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So in uh, 4.8, uh, we're targeting a developer preview. Like so, as Dane, as Dane was saying earlier, this is something the users can kick the tires, so to speak, on, mm -hmm. and um, give the and they can get a heads up of the direction that that uh, we're going. And if people want to get get involved in this project, um, whether it's Contour or the Gateway API, where's the best place for them to connect with you guys? You know, I would say on the Slack channel. So, uh, of course, you know, Contour, uh, it is a CNCF project. Let me actually uh, just uh, pop in a uh, link to community here in the chat window. Give me one second. So this is a, a really good resource uh, to reference. Yep. And um, interestingly enough, Gateway API has the same has the same resource as well. So those are both the, the community links for both projects. And uh, yeah, we'd appreciate um, you know more new happy faces coming in. And you know, even if it's just asking questions or you know, we're always looking for use cases, right? I mean, uh, we've got uh, uh, for Gateway API, we've got maintainers from uh, from Red Hat, myself, uh, from uh, from Project Contour, from Kong, you know, all these different implementations, of course, uh, Google as well. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, I mean, we'd appreciate, again, even if it's just, you know, questions or use cases, um, you know, and, and uh, looking forward to getting uh, more people involved. Yeah, and did you perhaps or anyone from the Contour community get a talk at CNCF EU? Is there anything in the schedule there that we can look forward to more de yeah. details? Yeah, Diane, thanks for bringing that up. I, uh, I forgot to mention that. So, uh, yeah, at uh, the upcoming KubeCon, we've got uh, we've got um, presentations uh, and live meetings for uh, for both projects. So, SIG Network, look for the SIG Network. Uh, meeting along with uh, presentations for Gateway API, um, and that's going to be really interesting because uh, Rob Scott from Google is going to do uh, a few different uh, demonstrations to really show 
um, the different implementations. So he's going to highlight contour with some of the other implementations and also um, demonstrate an advanced use case where uh, you know, we worked with a SIG multi-cluster pretty early on. And, and uh, so don't think about just the gateway API in the context of a single cluster being able to like um, do traffic splitting across two different service backends. I'll take that same idea, but bring it up a level and, and say, well, what if I had multiple clusters that I wanted to load share requests coming in across those clusters? And so, um, so he's going to be demonstrating uh, some of the advanced uh, features there with the multi-cluster uh, traffic splitting. Um, and then, yeah, Project Contour, we've got, we recorded a, a briefing and then we have a couple, uh, you know, meet the maintainer live sessions and um, definitely looking forward to um, you know, having a nice open discussion with people who are interested. So I, I think that's, that's probably um, besides the SIG network meetings and, and, and the community meetings, the, the next big event for uh, probably everybody who's listening to this um, besides uh, the Red Hat Summit April event um, and the 4.8 release cycle. Um, KubeCon EU is a, probably the next juncture where um, I'm thinking if there's any new features or use cases or anything, that's going to get showcased there. And please, if you're listening to this um, before or after, reach out to Danian, to the folks, um, Mark and others. Um, and we'd love to get your feedback on using it in the developer preview for OpenShift um, and hear, hear what you're doing and, and how you're using it. Um, so definitely reach out to us, and we look forward to getting an update um, post KubeCon on um, what new features and functionality gets um, added in as the project matures. So um, well done, and um, I know a lot of work went on in the background, a lot of collaboration across communities, across um, upstream projects. So this is really, you know, a really nice way to showcase all the the amazing cross-community collaboration that goes on in the background on some of these CNCF projects, and you know, really a nice a nice showcase. So thank you very much for today, and um, we'll just do this again, hopefully in another couple of months, and see where we're at then, and get your feedback. Especially if someone's using this in production, um, rolls it out in 4.8, um, and wants to talk about their experience, I'd love to hear that too as well. So that would be awesome. So. Um, Thanks, Damien. It's always a pleasure. And Mark, um, awesome work um, shepherding this all through. Not seeing any other questions in the chat, so I think you all get four minutes back to your day. So um, go grab a cup of coffee and enjoy the rest of your week. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we look forward to, to coming back. All right. Take care. Thanks, Dan.